The audio clips, among the earliest ever recorded, have been virtually unplayable for over a century. In the past year, scientists have found a way to listen to them. After Thomas Edison invented the phonograph in 1877, there was a rush of competition among scientists to make sound recording commercially viable. Edison and the Bells had settled on the cylinder as the format. Alexander Graham Bell, inventor of the telephone, was part of the competition. He sent several sealed tin boxes to the Smithsonian Institution with early prototypes of recordings to protect himself in case of a future patent challenge. The recordings have been stored in the Smithsonian since the 1880s, but with no device to play them, they sat on the shelf. Enter Carl Haber of Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. We can use this camera to take a large number of pictures of the item and create a very, very detailed digital representation of the structure of the surface. I'm going to rotate the record now and you'll see this starting to move up and down as if a needle was riding up and down in it. Around 18,000 optical images are taken for each rotation of the disc. Then the computer does its work to play back sound from the images. This kind of a bowl is the, is the groove that the stylus would, would sit in. There's a reading from Shakespeare's Hamlet. To be or not to be. And Mary had a little lamb. At that point, the, the first part of the record ends. Something apparently went wrong. It's probably the first recorded example of somebody being disappointed. The digital imaging system is ideal for archivists trying to protect the historically valuable disks because there is no physical contact needed to hear the audio recordings. The Smithsonian has about 200 early audio recordings from Alexander Graham Bell's Volta Laboratory. So far, they have used optical imaging technology to decipher six of those recordings. You can listen to them by logging on to AmericanHistory.si.edu. Brian Todd, CNN, Washington.